Thanks for joining us for another episode of Ideas Spotlight here on Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon, and today I'm joined by Lewis to talk about his fantastic Goonies Ideas Project. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode here on Beyond the Brick. I'd like to thank Clone Army Customs for making this live stream possible. If you have not seen their products before, you can check out all of their incredible Star Wars minifigures and accessories over at clonearmycustoms.com. And as always, you can find a link to their website in the description of this video. So I'm super excited to chat about this incredible Goonies ideas project today with the creator here. So thank you so much for joining me. And why don't you just launch on in with the project here to talk about uh, what is it about this movie in particular that made you want to depict this with Lego? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me, Joshua. It's, it's uh, great to be here. And I appreciate you guys taking the notice and putting me on here. For sure. Uh, well, Goonies, since I was, you know, it's one of those movies that I, one of those things that you remember as the first movie you saw as a kid. <laughs> it's like up there. I remember being in the theater. I remember that experience. And it's always been a movie that's, you know, near and dear to my heart. And I, and I, and I love it. And I have kids now, and we've watched, I've watched it with them, and they love it. And uh, through this whole quarantine, I, I got really back into building these mocks and, you know, playing that. And it's one of the movies that right off the bat, I figured, you know, it'd be really cool to have a good set about the Goonies because the whole, the whole story of the Goonies and the whole kind of, uh, the premise, I think, works great as a playset, you know, and it's kind of, I've always kind of been surprised that it's not something that Lego had done. Granted, it's a its a movie from 85, where the, it's the 35th anniversary now this year, so uh, it's dated for sure, but I still think it's really relevant. I think, uh, you know, definitely A-Falls remember it, and, uh, you know, like I said, my kids, and I know a lot of other kids watch it still, so it, it was a fun product to work on, for sure. Right. It's certainly a movie you still hear a lot about. People still talk about this movie and watch it all the time. And I think uh, connecting it with an anniversary is is always a good idea. Whenever you've got an ideas project like this, whenever if you can connect it with, you know, a sequel coming out like last week, we had David Pagano on with his uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. You know, you've got the new movie coming out later this year. So examples like that, whenever you can kind of connect it with something uh, happening broader in pop culture or something along those lines. And I think it helps the project out. Have you found that so far? Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, one of the, I, I've mentioned the, the project on the, the Goonies fan page on Facebook, for example, which is a huge community and, you know, they love it. And of course they are talking about the 35th anniversary. So yeah, the fact that it goes beyond Lego, you know, fan base, that's definitely been helpful for sure. So how did you then decide on uh, this design, it's almost like a tower design to depict the, the movie here? Uh, how did you hit on that as being kind of the final and best way to depict the, the different scenes from the movie? Well, that, that was probably the hardest part, actually. It took me quite a while to get to this form. Uh, so the movie, uh, for those that haven't seen the movie, the movie basically follows this group of kids, they call themselves the Goonies, as they go through, basically if they find their way into the opening of this certain of this cave and they work their way through the whole movie. That's basically a path that they follow. And at different points in the cave, there's different, you know, things that happen, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, they go in through, so, so right here you're looking at uh, the Fratelli's basement, which is where they go into the cave underneath the fireplace. Um, and then they go through, you know, the pipe room and then the, the cannonball room and the boulder room. So there's all these different rooms and I wanted to make sure that we hit that I hit all those big points in the same sequence that you see them in the movie. So that was, you know, it was a bit challenging. And I, and I, I had like this kind of ant farm kind of looking layout first that was kind of very linear and then it kind of wrapped around. And I, I tried a lot of different forms and everything was either just looked weird or it was, I thought it would be just way too big if I built it that way. Um, and then I kind of figured, let me go around in a circle. And then I figured, well, one, you know, one time around isn't going to be enough. So let me do another level. And, and that's how I kind of ended up with this three level uh, tower. And it works. You know, you start from the top, you go down, you go around one way. Uh, it drops down to the next and you go around the other way. And it's the same sequence that you see in the movie in terms hey. of the bones that they hit. Here we're seeing a, a photo with all of the minifigures. And this would certainly be a very minifigure packed set. 
uh, for Lego. So take us through some of these minifigure designs. Uh, is, is a lot of these uh, custom designs for the minifigures or, or did you try to stick with uh, real Lego parts at this point? How did that work? Uh, well, most of the faces, at least for our here, are custom except for Sloth, even though, well, you know what? There's a Sloth that I based this on that's from the, uh, uh, what was it? They had a Dimensions? I'm sorry? Was it from Dimensions? Yes, exactly. Okay. They had a Dimensions character of Sloth. But when I built this in studio, they don't have the, that model, so I had to kind of make that one. Um, but the rest are mostly custom. Uh, the the torsos on Mikey, Data, Chunk, Mouth, uh, Andy were custom, and also Mama was, was custom. I had to put the, that pearl necklace on her. Um, most of the faces are just standard uh, minifig faces that exist, but uh, yeah, so it's mostly the torsos that I had to kind of draw from scratch for 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 those five. So did you do this all then like computer graphics and you have that uh, uh, uploaded then to the project? Yeah, I use uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator to draw the artwork and then I use the part designer from Bricklinks, you know, Bricklinks part designer to create the the torsos. And I think Brand's, Brand's pants as well. Those are, in the movie he wears sweatpants with the short, the blue shorts on top of the sweatpants. So I had to make that one custom as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's I tried to be faithful to what they were wearing in the movie. Uh, and that's I, and not an easy thing to do. Yeah, exactly. A bit of a challenge, but I think you know, they, I think they look good. Yeah, no, fantastic. And then going back to the the build itself here. So you captured all these different scenes in the movie. Talk about some of the hardest elements, maybe some of the 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 harder scenes to capture or depict with Lego. What were some of the the big challenges with this project? Um. I think the trickiest thing for me was the slide in the sense that I needed to make sure that the slide worked because in the movie, there's a part where they, they get on these kind of natural water slides. I don't know if they're natural or the pirates made them, but there's this water slide that they go through and then it drops them off into the lagoon. So I had to use that center of the structure as kind of support, you know, the main support for the whole, for all three levels, but I had to make sure that the slide uh, worked as a slide, mm -hmm. minifigures could actually go through the slide and it would go through that centerpiece. Um, so that was kind of tricky, but um, the other hard part was just making sure that I had a, a strong enough structure through the middle uh, and still leave myself enough room on the outside to, uh, to have the scene on each corner. What is that, that the structure of this like then? Is it held up by uh, the, the kind of columns on the corners or is it held up by the, the rock part in the middle? How does that work? The bottom level, it's using the, the structure through the middle, but it also has the four corners. I didn't feel that was strong enough. Um, and then through the middle, it's mostly through, you know, I mean, the, upper, the levels above that are just supported through the middle. Were there any scenes that you just couldn't capture in this style with the go with going, uh, you know, kind of from the top down and going around in a circle? Were there scenes from the movies that you just uh, felt you, you couldn't capture uh, decent enough with this style of build? No, I, I was able to capture everything I wanted to. Um, one thing I did have a, tr a problem with uh, was the ideas team. Um, so in the movie, uh, this whole cave basically and all the traps and everything are were created by a pirate and his pirate crew, uh, One-Eyed Willie. And there's there's a, sh a treasure ship, a pirate ship with treasure in it at the bottom in the lagoon. Um, and the initial model I submitted had a pirate ship. And this is a good lesson to learn. I think anyone who's thinking about doing uh, anything on ideas is really consider what's been done before and uh, what their restrictions are. Um, that being said, I was no way I could have known this until I submitted it, but I guess having just released the Pirates of Barracuda base set, they were, they felt just having a ship, even it was like half a ship. It was like a cutout. You could see when I'd really at his table with his treasure. I, I felt it was a little bit of a loose, uh, loose association with a pirate ship in the, in the sense of a pirate set. I don't feel it's that, but they asked me to remove that pirate ship. Then I did another iteration of it, and they were still like, "No, we need to get that out of there." So I had to remove that part. That that was the biggest challenge with it. Says you know, I was a little, I wasn't thrilled about having to take that out because it's such a big, uh, 
key point of the movie, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful if it becomes a set and, you know, Lego's working on it and thinking about it, that they'll come up with a solution that, that works to put that pirate ship back in there or something, some other acceptable solution. Right. I think they, they try to avoid having too much overlap between, you know, similar yeah. projects. So that makes sense. Yeah. But then I've also seen a lot of other ships, you know, <laughs> get put on there. So, I don't know. I think they were probably a little too strict letter of the law kind of uh, approach to it. And that's fine. Yeah, you know, I get, I get they have their considerations. So hopefully we'll see where it ends up. If, uh, if we're lucky enough to have it approved, we'll see. Right. Now, do you have a, a piece count and a price point in mind for this set? Uh, I, the piece count, I know it's under 3000, it's, but it was close. Uh, it was about 2950 something. I think it was. So I don't know. I figured out that eight cent average nine, you know, it's, it probably put it around 225 or so 250. Um, I don't know exactly. And, and you know, uh, I, I think there's things that I could do more efficiently. If I take another pass at it, I'm sure I could reduce that part count. Um, and I probably will do that, especially if I see that it's approaching 10,000, I'll probably revisit it and, and streamline it a little bit, but, uh, I don't think it's going to get much, you know, it's going to stay around 2,500, you know, maybe probably a little more than that. So, right. but I think the, my iteration, we'll see what, if Lego does it, what they would do, but the target market for this, you know, with a lot, like you said, a lot of adults who watch this movie when they were kids, uh, you know, so they, They've got the the income now to be able to afford a more expensive set based on the movie. So I think you could you could definitely have a higher price set like this and, yeah. and still have it be, be very popular. Yeah, I think you know, and I saw there's, there's a few other projects on there of the Goonies and stuff like that, and you know, there's like us a, a specific scene or this or that, and I just felt like there's too much. Like you can't pick one scene over another in the Goonies. I mean, they're all so awesome. They're all so, you know the feeling of in each of those is, is special. I and mean, you can't, you know, I just felt like I can't just do one scene. Like it's gotta be the movie. You gotta be able to play through that movie. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's a higher price point, but I think it'd be well worth it for, for, for anyone who wants to either just play with it. It was a movie, a fan of the movie and wants to just have build the model and have it. Uh, I felt it kind of needed to be this. Sure. No, that, that definitely makes sense. So for anyone who wants to vote for this project, definitely look for a link to it in the description of this video. You can go over and throw your support over it. It's just over uh, 2,000 views right now, or 2,000 supporters right now. So definitely help that number to keep going up and uh, get this to 10,000. So it's a fantastic project. I also wanted to talk about one of the other projects that you have on ideas, which is your uh, Art Deco uh, Beach Hotel. And yeah. this, is, this is a really cool um, architectural uh, building here. So uh, tell us a little bit about this and kind of the inspiration behind this project. Well, the, uh, it's the, I, the idea came from me. I had never done a modular build before, so I wanted to give that a try because um, I've been looking at a lot of them and, I, and I, th I just think they're really cool and I like the idea of being able to connect these models and create, you know, a city or whatever you want to create. So it was my first attempt at a modular. And then as far as inspiration goes, uh, you know, I live, I live in Miami and, uh, these kind of art deco hotel, it's not based off any one hotel, but that look and feel is very much, you know, Miami beach, South beach, ocean yeah. drive. Um, so that was my inspiration, something a little local from home. So, and then, you know, and I was, I, the colors too was a big factor. I wanted to use these kind of colors to do something kind of art deco and it was fun to play with these colors. One of the advantages you have using studio as opposed to actual parts. Number one, there's parts that I that exist that I don't have. I wish I had. I wish I had one of those, you know, giant rooms like I see some people have. I'm very jealous of. With <laughs> um, so a, you get parts that I, you know, I, I unfortunately I couldn't, I don't have. And then there's colors that don't exist. Um, you know, Lego Ideas lets you use colors that for parts that don't exist in that color. Um, so that opens up a lot of possibilities. I've tried. I've done a model, a version of this, in in usable par in parts that exist, and it's nowhere near as nice. I mean that aqu that aqua blue and that uh, it, you, you just can't do it in enough parts, and uh, it's a shame. Hopefully, I'd love to see those parts and those colors. Right, but yeah, the the colors of this are certainly something that makes it stand out. You don't see a lot of. Very, very few Lego Lego sets or buildings or anything like that in this style and with these colors. And so 
Uh, like you said, I think it's very reminiscent of a lot of those buildings that you see in Miami in that area. Uh, and I think it captures uh, a very unique style very nicely. Yeah, thanks. It was a lot of fun to build. And one of the cool things I like about it, you know, the pool with the with the glass walls around it, I think is a cool little feature that, uh, you know, just adds a little bit of difference to it. And it's kind of something that is not typical. I, there's no pool like that in Miami that I've seen, but it would be cool if there was. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. I would. I definitely wanted to make sure we talked about that project as well. So I'm glad we could get some of your behind the scenes into a couple of your different ideas projects here for anyone interested in voting for these. Definitely look for a link to the Goonies project in the description. And you can also check out the, the Deco Beach Hotel as well and support that project. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today and for giving us the behind the scenes to your projects here. No problem. Thanks for having me. And I really appreciate the, you know, the support. And for people who want to, you know, continue to follow these projects as well as anything you do in the future, what's the best place to find your work online? Uh, on the ideas website and Instagram. I have an Instagram account where I post you know, the work that I do. It's uh, Salad Bricks, S A L A D Bricks. Okay. So, yeah. Perfect. So yeah, go uh, check him out on Instagram then, and you can uh, keep up with all of uh, all of his future projects as well. So look forward to seeing more from you in the future. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Joshua.